Hey everyone, so today we're going to be going over Zoom. We're going to go over how to set up your account, how to schedule meetings, and also how to join meetings. I highly suggest that you follow along with me throughout this tutorial and do the steps one by one. So in the description of this video, there is a link so you can go ahead and download Zoom. It also gives you a free trial if you haven't already set up an account. So click that link and let's just jump right into it. Here I am already signed into my Zoom account. I use just signing and signing up for account with my Google account. It makes things super easy. And now I'm just going to go ahead and take you through the process of setting up your first meeting. Now, this is a brand new account. This isn't my main account. So this is exactly what you're going to see here on 2020. So let's go ahead and click over here to meetings and then you're going to click schedule new meeting. So the first thing you can do is name the topic of the meeting. Now this is what everybody he's going to see so you could just say group let's just say group meeting one and then for the description you can kind of put whatever you want if you need people maybe to have certain sheets of paper certain documents out during this meeting this is where I typically put all that information this is the most important part so this is going to be when and the duration of your meeting so let's just say next week when we want to have a meeting on Wednesday the 18th at let's say noon and uh, make sure that's p.m and let's say we want that meeting to go for 30 minutes now if you want a longer meeting you either need to upgrade your account or you need to take a break during your meeting and then start a new meeting and if you need more than three participants then you're going to also have to go ahead and upgrade your account as well here's where you can set the time zone and you also can make this meeting a recurring meeting. So say if you want this to recur every week, every month, you can do that right here on this day of this month or on the first Sunday. It's really great so you don't have to go in and create this every single time. Here's where you can include a meeting password. Now think of the meeting password as an extra level of security. You don't need it because if you never sent out an invitation to that person, then they would have no way of joining the meeting. So the meeting password is just an extra level of security. So under video, this is going to be if you want to show off your desktop or if you want to show video of yourself, you either going to turn this off and on under the host option. Now, if you want your participants to also either to be able to show their screen or include them in like a conference call where you can see everybody's faces, you're going to turn this on. This is going to let people know that they should go ahead and get their cameras set up and ready. So for audio, even if your team are all at computers, you still want to select both for audio and give them the ability to call in. And now this is because sometimes it's complicated to set up and configure audio settings for a microphone, or sometimes microphones on laptops just are horrible in general. And so giving them the ability to call in is definitely a plus. But currently, because of the high amount of people that are coming over to Zoom right this second in March of 2020, there it seems to be some technical difficulties happening on the telephone side. So if you can use your computer audio, I highly suggest doing that and try to stay away from using the telephone as much because that seems to be causing some issues right this second. Last are the meeting options. So one of the things you always want to enable is join before hosts. I highly, highly recommend it because this is just going to allow somebody that is 15 or 10 minutes early to go ahead and join the call. Now, if you don't have this enabled and they go to join, it won't let them join until the host is actually there. And that can kind of cause a little bit of problems, especially if the host runs five minutes behind and you, these people are unable to call in, causing them to have to try to recall in every five or 10 minutes or every minute. And a lot of times it can cause confusion because they think that maybe they're having issues on their end and it's not. So just keep this enabled. There's no reason not to enable that. I never select muting participants upon entry. The only reason I would do this would be is if you're giving a presentation and you don't want anyone else to talk, then I could see enabling this. But outside of that reason, I wouldn't enable this. It can, a lot of times, again, just cause confusion for people that are using Zoom for the first time, trying to understand why 
you guys can't hear them. So I don't suggest enabling the waiting room. Waiting room is basically a waiting room that people have to sit in before entering the meeting. And the reason why is say if you go ahead and start the meeting and somebody joins the meeting late, they don't get to join the meeting, they get to join the waiting room. And then you have to manually take them out of the waiting room into the meeting. This is just an extra unnecessary step in my opinion but it's there if for some reason you want to use it. So the last option is to record the meeting automatically to your local computer. Now, this will take up a little bit more internet bandwidth, but it's a great option, especially if you have people that can't make it to the meeting, but you want to share the meeting afterwards, you can just send them a video link. I really, really enjoy and like this option. What I even like more is when you upgrade your account, you can actually record to the cloud and that is awesome because you can just automatically send that link right away instead of having to take the video that's on your computer and then re-upload it. So again, great option. And we're going to go ahead and click save. After you hit the save button to your meeting, you will be prompted with this screen. Now, this is where you're going to invite your attendees. You can do one of two methods. One, you can copy and paste this link right here, which is not what I suggest you do. Instead, I would just use this button here that says copy the invitation. And here it will not just have the topic and the time and join meeting and the meeting ID, but also have the phone number for your attendees to also call in. So just click copy this meeting invitation here. And now this is copied to your clipboard and you can paste this in any email that you want. On the screen, you can also add your meeting to a Google Calendar, an Outlook Calendar, or a Yahoo Calendar. Down at the very bottom, you can delete this meeting if it needed to be rescheduled for some reason. You can save as a template and you can also edit this meeting. Right next to that, you have start this meeting. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And it's going to prompt you to open in the Zoom meeting application. That's either going to be on your computer or your iPad or your phone. And if you don't have the application already installed, it will prompt you to download it. And if for some reason your download doesn't start, you can click download and run Zoom right here. For me, I already have it installed, so I'm just going to hit open Zoom meetings. Once you start your meeting, your screen will look something like this. If you have a webcam already connected, it should automatically connect. But if it doesn't, it's not a big deal. You're just going to go down here and select your camera. Here is also where you can start and stop the video. And here you can join with your audio and you can go into your audio settings and make sure that the right microphone is selected. Typically all that works automatically and you don't have to bother with it. Also down here you can invite people and this is also where you can share your screen. So here I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. So this is going to be the typical scenario for people that want to show documents or present to people. One of the great features about Zoom is when you're sharing your desktop, you can actually mark on anything. So here I'm just going to add markers to my desktop. So let's make a drawing and then let's make the format a thicker line. And you can see I'm circling right here. Let's change the color to something a little bit more visible, like yellow. So. This allows you to mark up on any documents live and not actually have to modify the documents themselves. It's a huge time saver. I'm going to go ahead and clear all the drawings and exit that. And that's pretty much how you set up a Zoom meeting. So when you get invited to a Zoom meeting, it's going to look something like this. Now, if you're on a computer, all you have to do is click this icon. And if you are, say, calling in, all you have to actually do is click on the one tap mobile number. So for this demonstration, I'm just going to click join meeting here and you're going to be prompted to open up in a Zoom meeting. And if you don't have this, you're going to click download and run Zoom. So for this demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and click open up Zoom. And just like that, I am in the meeting. So I'm gonna break everything down on the upgrade page really quick so you can make sure that you pick the right plan for you. If you click right here, you have four different options, pro, business, education, and Zoom rooms. Now, I'm going to break every single one of these down and in the description below, I'm going to leave timestamps so you can just kind of skip to which ones you want to hear about. But first off, let's go over pro and business because I think that's what's going to apply to most people. So pro is probably going to be the most used. Now, the only main difference between pro and business is how many hosts 
it allows. So on Pro, you can have like one to 10 hosts and business, you can have 10 and over. Now, it doesn't really change the price. In fact, if you have 10 hosts here, you're basically going to end up actually paying the exact same as you would for business and business just gives you a little bit more options. You might be wondering what a host is. A host is exactly what it sounds like. How many people are you going to have hosting meetings? So if you're a small company and you yourself are hosting all the meetings, you only need one host. But let's just say you're a bigger company and you want every department to have the ability to host their own meeting. So maybe you need five hosts, right? Because you have five different departments, you want to select five. Some of the other differences between the pro and the business plan is on the pro plan, you can have up to 100 participants per meeting. And on the business plan, you can have up to 300 participants per meeting. So on the pro and business plan, the meeting duration is limited to 24 hours, which means that you can have a 24 hour meeting if you want for some reason. The pro plan also includes user management, which just allows you to manage your admins that you have and admins are basically your hosts. It also gives the admins some future controls. You get reporting, which is like analytics for your meetings. With the pro plan, you also get a custom personal meeting ID. You can also assign a scheduler, which is somebody that basically is in charge of scheduling all the meetings. And you also get one gig of cloud storage for your meetings. So the business plan has everything the pro plan has, plus a little bit more. One of the things right off the bat, you can select from 10 hosts all the way down to 49 different hosts. And if you need more than that, you're going to have to contact contact Zoom and upgrade to their enterprise version. So the business plan includes up to 300 participants per meeting, dedicated phone support, which can be a huge help, especially for a much larger company. Having your people be able to call Zoom directly and have them help you instead of trying to contact one individual IT person is a huge help. You have the admin dash, you can do a vanity URL, you can add your company branding. There's options for on-premise deployment, managed domains, single sign-on, company branding, custom emails, LTI integration. And one of the coolest features I think is cloud recording transcripts. Basically it automatically generates a transcript from your meetings I find that super helpful. Down here is where you can also do add-ons. So you can do this for the pro or the business account as well, where you can add on more participants. If you want to add on an extra 100 participants, it's 40 bucks. If you wanna add on, say, an extra 500, you can do the, all that right down here. Here you have what's known as Zoom rooms. This is for conference rooms. I wouldn't do this unless you already have hardware that integrates with Zoom rooms, such as the Logitech Small Room Solutions for Zoom, or something like a D10 TV. A D10 TV is like an interactive TV, almost like an interactive whiteboard that can be projected right into a Zoom meeting. Uh, if you don't have those, then I wouldn't worry about this. So Zoom phone gives you a Zoom phone number, kind of like if you were to have a number with Skype. It's not something I recommend. I, if you need it for some reason, it's there. If you have a room that already uses this technology, you can use this. Again, most people aren't going to. So here you have another add-on for large meetings. You can add more participants. Audio conference options. This is if you want a dedicated number for conference calls. I think it's a little bit redundant to what you're already signing up for. Almost none of my clients have this. So it's there if for some reason you have a special use case for it, it's there. Last thing is cloud recording. Now this is typically the add-on that we use the most. It just gives you more cloud restoring options for your meetings, typically. 40 bucks a month is more than enough. So this isn't just great for the people hosting the meeting, but this is great for all the participants. It allows all the participants to have a video link at the end of the meeting and also allows them to go back through the meeting and take down notes that they might have missed or if they weren't in the position where they could write something down and they maybe forgot you know, a number or a figure, it allows them to go back and retrieve that information. Again, just start out with the $40 a month and then you can upgrade from there if for some reason you need more. Next is education. Now, education isn't for individual teachers or for students to sign up for it. This is going to be for schools or institutions that have a lot of teachers. Just the basic plan alone gets you 20 hosts. Now, hosts is, has to do with basically how many teachers you have. Say if you have 20 teachers, 
that need to teach online, then you need at least 20 hosts. But let's just say you have more, each teacher needs to be a new host. So let's just say you're in a school and you need 100, you need to click on 100 and you'll see how the reflects on the price. Now, the only other thing that I suggest for education is going to be maybe including some cloud recording. Now, you can click right here. The education plan doesn't include almost any cloud recording. It doesn't include a gig. It only includes a half a gig a month, which is nothing, especially if you have 20 or 100 hosts. Kind of give you an idea, one gig in Zoom roughly is about two to three hours of recording. And so typically what I would suggest would be at least let your host record a whole week's worth of stuff. So for example, if each teacher was using, let's just say five hours, say one hour a day of teaching, and that's five hours, you times that by 20, that's 100 gigs. So every single week, the footage would be deleted for the past five days. So then you would kind of go with this one. And then if you need more, you would go from there. So that's what I would suggest. And you can kind of use that and calculate how long you want these recordings to last. And that's the only upgrade that I would even suggest for the education package because it already has a lot. The last thing I want to touch on is Zoom Rooms. This is only going to be for conference rooms that already have technology that can be implemented into a Zoom meeting. If you have any more questions about Zoom, feel free to leave a comment. I'm typically really fast at responding to those comments. If you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Anyways, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys soon.